So after 20 years of playing guitar, going on tour, making all of these records, where would you start again on your guitar journey? If I took away all of your skills today. Okay, so first of all, please don't do that. This all kind of took a lot of time and effort. But I have to say that it's an excellent question and I would like to dedicate a video to this one. Because I think like any other professional player, I wasted a lot of time practicing the wrong exercises when I started out. If you followed my journey here on YouTube over at my main channel, you also probably know that I had to correct a lot of bad technique habits that were really holding me back. So if I had all of this knowledge starting today, here are five amazing exercises and concepts that I would focus on if I wake up tomorrow and all of my skills are gone. Thanks so much for placing this fear in my life. But anyways, here's the first exercise that I would practice. Alright, so this first exercise is kind of a more basic exercise in the A minor pentatonic scale. But if you listened closely, you might have heard two or three things in there that actually make this a very, very good exercise. So first of all, I would definitely focus on two note per string stuff like this. Simply because I went for three note per string scales right away as a teenager. So it took me a while to develop that relaxed wrist motion that is actually needed when you only play two notes per string. And I think I would have made much faster progress with relaxed wrist picking that I need for three note per string scales like this. But aside from the two note per string approach and the wrist picking, you might have heard and seen something even more interesting in here, the note groupings of this particular lick. So instead of always just going for groups of four, like one, two, three, four, or groups of two, one, two, you have a really cool group of three in here after the first group of four. So to start, I'm simply playing one, two, three, four, but then I go to a group of three, then groups of two, one, two, one, two, and then this group of four eighth notes again, one, two, three, four. I hear this a bit slower. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this simple lick in the A minor pentatonic scale box is just rhythmically really cool. Since I'm going for alternate picking right here, so always down, up, down, up and so on, I also have to switch strings in an interesting way and that forces me to really get that wrist picking motion under control if I'm not always playing groups of two or three across all strings. I also have to roll my index finger and pinky finger a bit to separate those two notes. So the main reasons why I would work on an exercise like this. First of all, the two note per string picking approach concerning the wrist picking motion. Number two, the unique note grouping, making this not just an exercise, but a really cool lick that I would use in a song. And the unique alternate picking pattern resulting from those note groupings. So not always down up, then I go to the next string, down up and so on. I have to skip between the strings in unusual ways and that results in a much more controlled picking motion. Now let's move on to the second exercise. <laughs> So with this exercise, I'm in the key of C minor. The bass is playing the root notes while I'm playing these simple arpeggios. So the bass is playing C, A flat, C, E flat. If I would play full chords in the background, seventh chords, those would be C minor seven, A flat major seven, C minor seven again, and then E flat major seven. So in the case of a minor seventh chord, like the first one, C minor seven, you have the root, minor third, perfect fifth and minor seventh. And in the case of a major seventh chord, like the A flat major seventh or E flat major seventh chords in there, you have a root note, major third, perfect fifth and major seventh. Those are just the names of the intervals in the chord. But when most guitar players hear a chord progression like this, their ears tell them, hmm, that kind of sounds like the key of C minor. So I'm just gonna play the C minor scale over all that. That's not completely wrong, but it will not get you the most interesting and melodic result. Instead, check out what I did with this basic music theory exercise. I was actually always playing the same sequence of notes or intervals, I should say, for every single chord. I was starting with the seventh of the chord, so I was not playing the root note for the first note of my solo, so to say. I was always starting with the seventh of the chord, so I was not beginning my solo sequence with always playing the root note. Each measure starts with a super interesting note in the lead guitar part that's played over the bass. So in the case of C minor seven in the first measure, I played the minor seven, then I played the perfect fifth, then I played the minor third, then I played the major second, and that's pretty much it. Then I just went back up. And I actually ended with the root note or the octave of the root note. For the next chord, it's the same procedure. 
once again I was ending with the root note or the octave of the root note. So when I'm practicing this exercise and not just memorizing which notes I have to play, I'm actually thinking about the intervals. So I'm seeing the full chords as I'm playing my solo part. And for each chord I'm playing the seventh, then I'm playing the fifth, then the third, then the second, because that's really interesting to me. I love the sound of major seconds. I keep that same melodic structure in place and I'm simply changing the notes for every single chord, but it's the same interval structure that I'm playing within the scale. Now this exercise is so great because it unlocks so many awesome melodies when you're improvising. Over time, you will be able to see the chords that you're playing over, but instead of just playing the chords like you're a rhythm guitar player, you're playing the right intervals and the most interesting intervals for every single chord as you're playing over them. Instead of just thinking over the scale and playing the same old boring repetitive licks all the time. So this exercise will allow you to melodically accent every single chord change and that will make you sound like a much much better and more experienced guitar player right away. That's why I would start working on things like this right away if I lost all my skills tomorrow. By the way if you currently kind of feel like you're losing your personal skills on the guitar with every single practice routine so you don't really feel a satisfying buildup of your skills if you feel more like you're stuck in a rut for months or maybe even years by now you might be missing some crucial exercises in your practice routine, some bad guitar technique habits, your lack of music theory knowledge might make you sound like a beginner player for the rest of your life. You should start working with the right exercises starting tomorrow because it's really not that hard and absolutely everybody can do this with the right and most effective training. That's exactly why I put together over 20 extremely helpful guitar courses for my Patreon community on patreon.com burn. This is my online guitar academy with over 10,000 active students at the moment. It's the biggest guitar community on Patreon by far because all members don't only get the tabs, get the profiles, play along videos and backing tracks for those weekly lessons. They also get access to 20 full guitar courses like my alternate picking masterclass, my 30 day sweep picking course, my legato course and multiple music theory packages as well from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So no matter if you're just literally starting out today or you have years and years of experience, this platform is for any skill level and you find all the courses and exercises you will ever need in one place. So no more aimless scrolling through YouTube trying to connect all the dots in a very frustrating way. This is what you've always been looking for and I've made it extremely affordable for absolutely everyone in the name of guitar education. So join us today, download the practice package for all of today's exercises and over 20 guitar courses. By now if you're still not part of this honestly what are you waiting for? Join us today with the link in the description or in the first comment. I'm waiting for you over there but now let's move on to the next exercise. <laughs> All right, so with this workout, we are clearly focusing on technique once again, picking technique this time. As I mentioned, as a young and aspiring shredder and metalhead, I moved to three note per string exercises quite quickly. But one major mistake when it comes to this that I was definitely guilty of is focusing on the patterns that come natural and quite easy for me. And kind of ignoring the ones that gave me a hard time where you have to switch between the strings in rather interesting ways. So the exercise I showed you would be my absolute go-to exercise when it comes to practicing three note per string scales with fast alternate picking. I was always just starting with the lowest note in the scale and then kind of moving my way up through the scale. <laughs> But with this one I'm starting on a higher string, so on the A string for example I'm playing that down stroke followed by an up stroke on the lower string, so this is kind of awkward right away, especially when you have to do it very fast. Then I'm kind of playing the full scale phrase on the lower string before I go back up. And by repeating this I kind of have to switch awkwardly between the A and E string, that's really really difficult actually. So everyone's picking technique is slightly different. There are just so many small details. And I would suggest kind of seeking out those patterns that don't really feel quite natural for you and that are just much harder than other patterns. And then finding out why those patterns are harder for you to play. Most of the time it's the picking angle. So angling the pick either like this or like this makes things harder or easier. And to quickly summarize, this scale workout is a great starting point for everyone, I think. Because with the exercise, you just have one note on a higher string before you go back to the lower string with a fast alternate picking run that's kind of unusual. And as you repeat this pattern across all strings, you constantly have to jump between the strings in an awkward way. So this is really great for your picking control. So if you also keep a close eye on your fretting hand and on keeping the fingers close to the neck, you get a really killer technique workout for your fast play. But starting all over again, I feel like I would have to focus much more on my fretting hand. So here's an awesome exercise just about that. <laughs> 
Alright, so with this really cool exercise, my fretting I had to work quite a lot. I was also working with an interesting hybrid picking approach. So for this exercise, I'm picking, I'm playing down strokes, but I'm also using my middle finger for some finger picking action, hence the name hybrid picking, picking and finger picking. We're using the exact same scale position from the last workout, but this time instead of picking every single note, I'm hammering on the first three notes. But after that, I'm using my middle finger to play E on the A string, so... The reason for that is it's simply a little bit smoother when I'm working with hammer-ons and pull-offs and I'm using my middle finger. Because with this playing style I want to make it sound as fluid as possible, I want to connect all the notes and I don't want you to hear when I'm switching between the strings so I don't want a heavy picking accent on every single string. So by working with hybrid picking, especially when I speed things up a bit, you can't really hear that excessive picking attack that beginner and intermediate players often get when they play legato phrases, like on the first note. So a super strong, strongly picked note followed by lesser articulated hammer-ons or pull-offs. That simply doesn't sound as elegant and cool as... The main focus with this exercise is definitely on the fretting hand, like keeping the fingers close to the neck, but also playing super tight, controlled hammer-ons. So getting nice sounding notes out of just hammering on on the fretboard without those picking strokes. But the real reason why I would work on this if I had to start out again is because even when I was an intermediate player already, I had a lot of problems with finger control. So it would bend away from the fretboard like crazy. So moving your fingers like this makes it really hard to speed things up because you have to constantly go back and forth from here to here. That also means you will hit the strings when you do this, which results in a lot of unwanted string noise as you're playing. So when I got into guitar technique and into correcting all of my bad habits, I extensively practiced all the classic finger exercises. But the one thing that made things click for me right away is when I got really obsessed about legato. So perfecting my hammer-ons and pull-offs and only working with my fingers. That's when I realized how I have to move my fingers so that they stay relaxed and close to the fretboard while still getting really fast and super clean interesting results. So that might actually be my biggest regret so far, not working on legato exercises right away. So once again with this workout you have multiple really cool benefits. I think it's kind of cool to work on the hybrid picking technique, you never know when you're gonna need it. It results in a super fluid and nice fusion-like sound. You're working on your hammer-ons and pull-offs, but most importantly you're working on your finger technique in general, which you will need for anything because you need your fingers to play anything on the guitar. So by working on this your fingers will start to be more relaxed, you will have more control over them, especially that nasty pinky finger, and I personally can't recommend this exercise enough. But here's one more for you that concerns the picking hand and maybe the most important aspect of guitar playing like ever. Let's see if you find out which one. might have already figured out what the big practice concept right here is. It's timing. Pretty much the most important aspect when it comes to guitar playing. And a seemingly simple exercise like this is great for your picking and for your wrist motion and all that. But there's one aspect in here that makes this an amazing timing workout. And that's because you have to switch between different note values. So you're starting this workout with eighth note triplets. So you're playing three notes per beat. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. But then you have to switch to regular eighth notes where you play two notes per beat. One, two, one, two. And on top of that, you also have to skip between the strings. So you have to skip the D string multiple times because you're just playing on the G and on the A string. But here, when you switch to the eighth notes, and this might look simple enough to you, but I really want you to give this a try just to a metronome and pay close attention if your transition from the triplets to the eighth notes is perfectly in time. Because I would dare to say over 90% of guitar players are either rushing or dragging when they switch between note values. A common example is switching between the eighth note triplets that are kind of fast back into the eighth notes and kind of rushing at the beginning. That is exactly what you want to avoid with this exercise. You want both note groups to be perfectly in time as soon as you switch to them. You also want this to feel like one connected movement, so not completely switching your technique whenever you're switching between the note values. As always, I made a slow and a fast play along video for you on Patreon so that you can practice this exercise together with me. Especially with this workout, I would urge you not to skip the slow one because in this case, it might be actually harder to play this very, very slow and accurately to the click and to make it even a bit more difficult. The picking pattern is 
also not that easy with the string skipping. So from a purely technical point of view, it's a great picking exercise once again for your wrist picking motion because you won't be able to play this with a super stiff hand. Your hand needs to be relaxed in order to get the string transitions and the timing right. But your biggest benefit without a doubt right here is that you work on your timing. As I often say, this is something we all don't work on enough. But if I lost all my skills tomorrow, I would definitely have a timing workout block in my routine so that I can play tight to a click either live on stage or in the studio. So if you currently don't work on timing, please go for this one. It's possibly quite life changing. All right, my friends, those are five extremely powerful exercises that I would personally work on if I lost all my skills tomorrow. Make sure to download the full practice package for these workouts on Patreon right now. So the backing tracks, tabs, guitar profiles and play along videos so that you can work on them together with me in your next practice routine. Once you sign up today with the link in the description and in the first comment, you will get access to over 20 guitar courses right away. Lots of awesome music theory programs, everything you will ever need on your guitar journey. So let's start making some real progress right away. Join us today with the link in the description or in the first comment. I'm waiting for you over there. Talk to you soon. Greetings from Vienna and bye bye.